Picture the scene. 1920, New York City. Same year, Babe Ruth gets traded from the Red Sox to the Yankees. And the Brooklyn Fly Fishers Club owns a stretch of water on the upper Beaver Kill. A guy named Chester Mills of the famed William Mills and Son Tackle House of New York City hands a guy named Johnny Woodruff a handful of new flies and asks him to try them out next time he goes fishing. So the next time Woodruff is at the club, he shows these flies to all his buddies. And nobody was impressed. But later that night, everybody's sitting around the dinner table. A club member runs in and says, grab your rods, gentlemen. There's a major hatch going on. Okay, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I don't know if he said that exactly, but... Everybody left dinner, grabbed the rods, and went out to fish this hatch on the beaver kill. And nobody caught a thing except Johnny Woodruff. The rise proved disappointing to everyone but Johnny, who took a basket full of handsome fish, said Harold Smedley 24 years later in his book, Fly Patterns and Their Origins. And that's how this fly came to be called the Woodruff. By 1930, the Deddies were selling it in their catalog. The Darbies were selling it up until the 1960s. And the flies never really fallen out of favor. And I got that story and the recipe from Mike Bala's Tying the Founding Flies. A great book. If you don't have it, definitely check it out. But this fly, the Woodruff. I think y'all are going to like this 100-year-old Catskill original. So there's one in the vise. A classic Catskill-style dry fly called the Woodruff. Now, common sizes for this are 12 to 16. I'm going on a size 12. It's a barbless light wire dry fly hook. Let's get that fixed in there and put down a little bit of tan thread. I'm going to put it on the first third of the hook. And the first thing we're going to catch in, some grizzly hackle tips, and try to get the convex sides together so that you can get a little bit of a, a splay on them. It's not always the easiest thing to do, but if you do, the you know, the shiny sides together you might be able to get that little splay right there and you know we'll do a couple of loose wraps right here take a look at them and envision flipping them up we're going to want them to be you know about to the top of the hackle which for this catskill style fly will be two hook gaps so i think we're going to be fine right there let's go ahead and bury these and snip this excess Now let's get our thread right back behind these and we're going to pull them up and put a few wraps right under here to try and prop them up about 90 degrees. Now according to Vala, you do want them at least semi-spent. You could tie them all the way spent if you want, but do at least, you know, 40 degrees or so right here. And how we'll do that, we'll just put some wraps back to forward and then forward to back and we can always try to position these wings when we're wrapping our hackle a little bit later so i think that's going to be fine right there let's go ahead and, and they're leaning a little bit farther back than i want but we'll be able to prop them up here shortly but before we do that if you've got any you know wayward fibers right here just go ahead and snip them or don't worry about them you know it's that would be pretty much hidden with the the collar hackle we're going to be wrapping shortly anyway and the next thing we're going to catch in, just some grizzly hackle fibers for the a tail. And we're going to want this about, I'd say at least a, a shank length, maybe even longer. And I just pulled these from the, you know, the bottom part of the feather that I got those tips from. I think we're going to be fine right here. Let's go ahead and bury these. Keep our thread at the back and put some wax on it. Now let's take our dubbing blend, and this is a mix about 90% of olive and olive brown with maybe 10% of a light yellow, maybe a creamish color. And we don't need a whole lot because we're only going to dub it to just a little bit behind these wings. Okay, I think we're going to be fine with that. Now, some brown dry fly hackle. And this is, we're going with the Catskill style. You know, you don't necessarily have to, but take a feather that's gonna give you some barbs about, you know, two times the hook gap. Now let's catch it in behind these wings and far enough back that we can get, I would say three wraps behind these wings and then three wraps in front of them, maybe two or three in front of them, or even four, depending on how bushy you want it. 
but go ahead and bend that stem forward and capture it in before you snip it off. And now, let's just wrap this, this dry fly hackle. Again, maybe three wraps behind it and three or so in front. And let's go ahead and catch this off right here. I think we've got enough hackle. If you want to go true old school Catskill, you'll leave a little bit of metal behind that eye, a little bit of bare metal showing, just, you know, in case you wanted to do a turly knot, which I don't think anybody ever does those anymore, but that's why they used to do that. So create a little bit of room there behind the eye for our whip finish. Three or four turns would be fine. Try not to capture the fibers going forward like I just did right there. Gives me a little bit more cleanup, which, you know, okay. I should have been a little more careful right there. But we'll be fine. Let's go ahead and snip this excess. And yeah, wouldn't you know it, I got some fibers going forward just because I wasn't, you know, careful enough right here. But just snip these or grab your singeing tool if you want. Get a little bit cleaner right there. And there you go. Pretty old Catskill style fly called the Woodruff. Pretty easy tie and, you know, pretty good looking pattern. So I appreciate you watching folks. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time. And try to get the convex sides together so that, you know, they'll splay out. We can always do that with thread wraps, but if you get it when you start, it might make it just a little bit easier. And I've got these going all over the place, homie. Blah, blah, blah. Start that little segment over.